I'm Andy Fisher, WNEW News. At seven minutes past ten, time for the Sears Radio Theater. <laughs> That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Here's a preview. Many lads in this part have taken a hanker into the way she looks, but as soon as she opens that mouth of hers... You, you mean she's not friendly to them? Friendly? She'd make a porcupine look like a pillow cushion. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Hello, everybody. I'm Chip Cipolla, and beginning March 28th in Anaheim, California, Cosmos Soccer is on the air. Join me and Jim Carvellis and Scott Morrison as we bring you all the exciting play-by-play -play action of a game with a California surf starting at 10.30 New York time. That's Wednesday, March 28th. Cosmos Soccer, only on WNEW, where when it comes to sports, we've got you covered. run up and down your spine. There's a creeping sensation at the back of your neck. You're listening to CBS Radio Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for these hour-long dramas of suspense, adventure, and the macabre. Heard seven times a week on most of these stations. Here's a sample of what we mean. Hush, hush, my darlings. Your mother is taking care of all of you. You have nothing to fear. Let those who move against us learn to cower in terror. As long as the moon is full, we rule the nights. Ours is the power and the glory. You will inherit the world, and I am your queen in whatever guise I choose to cloak myself. Listen here for CBS Radio Mystery Theater seven times a week on most of these CBS Radio Network stations. This is Lorne Green. The year is 1886, and these are the wild rolling plains of the Dakota Territories. That young man with the dark hair and beard being released from the territorial prison is Zeb Hamilton. He's only 24 years old, and he's been in there for five long years. But Zeb was lucky compared to the other members of the gang that robbed a bank in Pierre five years ago. They were all killed in the shootout, except for Zeb and one other. The other's name is Kurt Fanner. And as ringleader, with a price on his head, Fanner was given ten years in jail to Zeb's five. Yep, Zeb was real lucky. Except for one thing Zeb doesn't realize... Within 24 hours, his former partner, Kurt Fanner, is going to escape from that same territorial prison and is going to go after Zeb. You see, Zeb knows where $4,000 in unrecovered loot from that robbery is buried. He thinks it's going to help him start a new life. But if Kurt Fanner has his way, it's going to be the end of the one he has. And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of the Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Ace in the Hole, by John Bornholt. Our stars, John Daner, Joan McCall, and Ron Stark. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. You want to buy some radios, but time's all the same. You've got to have good feelings, you've got to trust the name. You know our reputation, remember what we said. When Sears is behind you, you come out ahead. Tell us the one about Robux 
jeans, old timer. You mean genuine Robux jeans from Sears? Checks. The Western way of life begins in a pair of authentic Western Robux jeans. Made out of hard-working denim? Roping calves, wrestling steers? Why, that's the kind of action heavyweight Robux was made for. Hey, how about looks? Well, whether you're a rodeo star or a city dude, permapressed Robux help give that neat, rugged cowboy look. Robux, the men's jeans that won the Golden West at most larger Sears retail stores. At Sears, we know how important appliances are in your home and how important it is to you to keep them operating in top condition. That's why Sears wants their customers to remain satisfied with our products for years to come. That's why we service the Sears appliances we sell to help make sure that your appliance will continue to give you quality performance. If you have a problem, just call Sears Appliance Repair Service. We're nationwide and listed in the white pages of your telephone directory. Sears, where customer satisfaction is one of our most important priorities. Zeb Hamilton's luck continues, all of it bad. No sooner does he pick up the $4,000 in unrecovered loot from the robbery than his horse trips in a burrow and breaks her leg, just when he thought he had nothing more to worry about. Sorry, old horse. I didn't get to know you very well, but you seem like a pretty good horse to me. Didn't even have time to think up a proper name for you. Oh, girl, girl, don't fret. It'll be over soon. At least for you it will be. I don't know when I'll be able to rest. I thought it was going to be easy for both of us from here on out, but I guess not. So I'll just pick up my money in my saddle and walk on down that hill there. Looks like some trees at the bottom. Might mean a homestead. Maybe I can buy another horse. But... I'm sure she won't be half as good as you. You've been a real good horse, and I'm sorry. Maybe, if we're lucky, we'll meet again in the next go-round. Bye, old horse. Well, let's see what's down that hill. Marshal Jack, wake up. There's been an escape, and the warden wants you to go right after him. Well, hang on a second. Now, what is it, Brad? There's been an escape from the prison, and the warden wants you to go right after him. Well, we'll see about that. Who has it escaped? Kurt Fanner. And he's armed. Go saddle up the horses. This looks like a nice place. They got a well, plenty of firewood, some chickens, barn. The only thing they don't seem to have is people. Wonder where everybody is. Hello? Hello, anybody home? I know there's got to be somebody in here. There's wood burning in the fireplace. That's far enough, mister. Whoa, whoa, hold it. Don't do anything rash. I can't even see you. Oh, you can see me, all right. Giving you look good. <laughs> Just peer to the left of that grandfather clock. You see the water pitcher? Yeah. You see the knot hole about six inches above it? I see it. Then do you see the rifle barrel sticking out at you? All right, okay, mister. You made your point. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Drop your saddle and your gun belt to the floor, real slow. Drop your saddlebags, too. If you don't mind, I'd sort of like to hold on to the saddlebags. Suit yourself. Now, young fella, you turn around and get the hell out of here. Mister, you got me all wrong. I didn't come here to hold you up or anything. My horse went lame out on the prairie, and all I want to do is buy another horse. That's a likely story. Now get moving. Look, I walked up here, didn't I? Would a man be traveling on foot in this part of the country? Especially a robber? Well, well, that, that ain't too likely. You say all you want to do is buy a horse? That's it. And I won't even be too particular. Ah, I got me two decent mares, but neither one of them is ever going to win a beauty contest. As long as they have four legs. How much you got to pay? I, I got enough. Two hundred? Two hundred? Yeah, I guess I got two hundred. <laughs> well then, young fella, I guess we got a deal. 
Come right this way and bring your money with you. a nice spread you got here, Mr. Uh... Wilbur Jameson. You can call me Wilbur. Yeah, this is a nice $200 you got, young fellow. It's a little clammy, though. Where's it been? Buried somewhere? It's a long story, old man. Maybe I'll tell you someday. No, I don't think so. Because as soon as you pick out your horse, you're riding out of here. Fine by me. Now, Edna here is a couple of years younger... Not much, I'd say, but it's only fair to tell you. Lulu, on the other hand... Hey, no. Wilbur! <laughs> Wilbur! Get up, Wilbur! Uh, uh. Come on, old man! No! No, you... Oh, my. in here. Look, can you shoot? Of course. Okay, here, take my gun and cover me. I can't tell you where to shoot because I didn't see who's shooting at us out there. Just don't hit me. If I hit you, it'll be because I'm aiming at you. All right. Ready? Ready. Are you okay, old man? Not in particular. I, I want you to grab hold around my neck. I, I ain't sure I can. If I don't bring you back, that girl in there's coming after you. There, that's better. Hang on, we're going in. <laughs> What would it cost to replace your car's muffler, including installation? Oh, I'd say about $50. No, wait, $45. It'd be around $30. I guess about $40. The Illumini Sears muzzler is only $19.99. That's half of what I guessed. It's hard to believe. On a Cadillac? That's a terrific price. With installation included. Yes. Should have known it. Sears. The muzzler, just $19.99 installed. Clamps if needed, 99 cents each extra. Sizes to fit most American-made cars. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii at most Sears tire and auto centers. The waist on these jeans fit fine, but the hips are too tight. My hips look sleek in these jeans, but I'm swimming in the waist. We need jeans that fit at the waist and hips. We need jeans that fit from Sears. For every size waist in jeans that fit, there are three hip sizes to choose from, and two lengths. Tapered, contoured, fitting as if they were tailor-made. Whether a little skinny, a bit hippy, or in between, it's jeans that fit. From the fashion place at most larger Sears retail stores. On guard. Effective fencing demands style and endurance. That includes fencing around your home. Sears Armadillo Chain Link Fencing has both, setting off your house and helping protect your home. How? For starters, Sears Armadillo Framework has three protective coatings that work together for a lustrous, highly rust-resistant frame. Gates even match the fencing design for uniformity. So call your local Sears soon for your free home estimate. Armadillo Chain Link Fencing at most larger Sears retail stores. Look out! Uncle Wilbur, you all right? 
<laughs> Let's get him into the other room. Maybe you'd like to tell me who's out there, mister. You bet I would. But maybe it'd be better if you told me. How can I tell you anything? We ain't never had any kind of trouble like this before. Oh. Here, set him down easy. <laughs> Where are you going? Out to the kitchen to get some cloth for bandages. Whoever's out there has a clear shot at you through those kitchen windows. Mister, maybe I ain't so concerned about myself all the time like you. Marcy, you, you listen to him like he says. He saved my life. Shaw, sure, I was going to do it myself. You, mister, you go tell your friends to leave us alone. No friends of mine out there. I'll be back with the bandages. She's a mighty headstrong young woman. She's a mighty <laughs> foolish young woman. You just rest, old man. I'll take care of her. About the horses. Oh, they're gone. Run off. Uh... It's real peculiar. It's like whosoever's out there is more interested in keeping us boxed in here than killing us. They surely could have plugged me a dozen times. And you, why didn't they finish you off? It's almost like they've been shooting wide on purpose, just to scare us. And now, they're just waiting. You got any enemies, Wilbur? No, nary a one. <laughs> I ain't got no friends nor enemies. You? No, only... Oh, but he's in jail. What's going on here? His wounds aren't bad enough, but you gotta talk him to death. Give me some room. Oh. oh, it's bad, but it's not that bad. Uh, why don't you let me do that? Haven't you done enough? I knew the moment I saw you walk through that clearing that you were trouble. We've lived peaceful and quiet here for ten years until you come along. And now this. If you want to be some help, go back where you came from. Marcy. It's true. He's the one got you all shot up. We never had any trouble with anyone before. I'll keep watch. Fine. Marcy, go easy on the boy. What for? How do we know what he's mixed up in? Well, he, he don't seem the type. You're so shot up, you're delirious. There's his tracks, Jack. Headed due east. He don't seem to be trying to hide them. No, I'd say Fan is in a hurry. But uh, why east? Do you remember the bank robbery that got Fanner put away? Yeah. There was some other fella put away with him. What was his name? Oh, uh, Zeb Hamilton. He, he was released day four yesterday. And they were the only two left from the gang that held up that bank and pier. But you know that not all the money was recovered. The judge ruled that the rest of it got lost in the getaway. But what if Hamilton and Fanner had had time to bury the money before the posse caught up with them? Then it would still be there. And you would both make straight to it. That explains that older set of tracks. Gee, Marshal Jack, you're smart. And we haven't caught him yet. We have at least two days to make up. Come on. Oh, it's you. Who were you expecting? I'm through trying to guess. How's your uncle? He's finally asleep. Good. But we ought to get a doctor here as soon as possible. I was thinking the same thing. But you haven't moved from that window ledge in two hours. I'm almost sure our friends are holed up inside that barn. And if I leave this window, they can fan out and come in through the front. And what are you going to do when it gets dark? I've been wondering that myself. Are you planning to spend the night? Not if I can help it. Believe me, I'd leave right now if I thought nobody was out there. I realize I'm just a silly female. But I don't see anybody at all out there. I don't see them. I hear them. Doing what? Laughing. Twice I've heard crazy-sounding laughter coming from that barn. Look, mister... Zeb. Zeb. I have no more reason to trust you than whoever's out there. All I'm worried about is my uncle. Now, there's a town five miles up the road, and one of us could walk there and be back with a doctor just after nightfall. That, to me, seems a sensible thing to do. And I suppose it seems sensible to send me? Well, well yes, it does. You two will be all alone if I get killed. I hate to remind you, but we were all alone before you came along, and we're doing just fine. You really think you can hold out here? I think I can do as well as you've been doing. All right. Cover me. Zed! It's all right. I'm not hit. <laughs> Who the hell are you? What do you want? <laughs> Who are you? See 
Mears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Eight ball in the side pocket. He'll never make that shot. Hey, that's a beauty. Yeah, he cut it to the inside. Say, where's Kessler tonight? He's out walking with his dog. Sure does like that dog, doesn't he? Well, you know, he had a heart attack last Christmas, and he's got exercise to build up his heart. Walking is exercise? It's a lot better exercise than pushing that pool cue, bingo. It helps your circulation, and that's what Kessler needs. We could all use some exercise. Look at that gut. I don't know. Shooting pool with this bun sure takes it out of me. Are we moving too fast for you, Bingo? Is the strain too extreme? The strain of exercise may be too extreme if it's been a while. See your doctor first. With an examination, he can determine what kind of exercise program is right for you. Contact your American Heart Association for more information. We're fighting for your life. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Are you in the market for a used car? If you are, it would be wise to shop around until you get a feel for the market. It's important for you to find out if the car is covered by a warranty. A used car warranty is limited. For example, it may cover the first thousand miles or 30 days. Remember, however, the warranty is as good as the dealer who backs it. And you check his reliability with your local Better Business Bureau. Also, remember that careful inspection is the key to enjoying a used car. Be sure and look for rust. Check the tires, the shock absorbers, and the operating controls. And incidentally, it's also a good idea to take a test drive. You see, by giving the car the once-over before you buy it, you're protecting yourself against a faulty purchase and a lot of headaches after you've bought it. This has been a tip from your Better Business Bureau. <laughs> Time passes slowly when you're just waiting, especially the night. After five years in prison, it seems the wait isn't over for Zeb Hamilton. Zeb and Marcy and Wilbur Jameson are trapped inside the Jameson farmhouse. None of them knows exactly who is out there. They only know that whoever it is doesn't want them to leave. Hey. Young fella. Yeah? You just gonna sit there by that window all night? Until I find out who's out there. Well, you ain't gonna find out that way. Come on, have something to eat. I ain't hungry. Thanks anyway. You can't have eaten since early this morning. Marcy. Yeah, Uncle? Fetch this boy something to eat, will you? <coughs> Why? Why? <laughs> because he's probably hungry. Uh, that's all right. I don't want to take any of your food. Why not? We won't need it after you get us both killed. Fetch him some food, Marcy. Might as well. <laughs> How do you feel, old man? <laughs> How'd you feel with a hole in your shoulder? Makes you damn uncomfortable to do anything. Well, at least you ate. You don't feel any weaker, do you? Weaker than what? I'm 61 years old. I've felt weak for years. <laughs> <laughs> like your niece keeps telling me, I, I shouldn't be talking you to death. Oh, don't mind her. She's been around me so long, she's gotten cantankerous before her time. How old is Marcy? Seventeen. Good marrying age. And how come she's not married? Well, after what you've been through with her, you got the gall to ask me that. Many lads in this part have taken a hanker into the way she looks. But as soon as she opens that mouth of hers... You, you mean she's not friendly to them? Friendly? She'd make a porcupine look like a pillow cushion. Quit talking about me. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> you better try to get some sleep, Uncle. <laughs> Here's your food. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Go on, Marcy. Get him some cider, too. I don't see why we should have to be waiting hand and foot on any stranger who comes in here and starts shooting things up. He didn't come here out of malice. His horse went lame out on the prairie. Sure. And I suppose it was his horse that shot you all up. Marcy, look, I... I'll get your cider. I don't think she likes me very much. Ooh, I wouldn't be too sure about that. At least she yells at you. That's more than she's ever done with any other man. Done? Yes. That... that was very good. We 
game to please. You know, Zeb, I've been thinking, what we ought to do is put out all the lamps in here, and that'll put you on an equal footing with them varmints out there, and you could sneak out a window and have it out with them once and for all. I could, only... Only he's not as stupid as he looks. What if there's four or five of them? Then where'll he be? No, I think if we just wait out the night, they'll probably get tired and leave. Didn't you say they ran off the horses? They, that's probably all they're after, our horses. Yeah, yeah, maybe you're right. Now you got to get some sleep, Uncle. I'd take you into your bedroom, but I don't want to risk opening that wound again. Uh, okay, Marty. I'll sleep here. <laughs> Pleasant dreams, old man. What are these things? Can I move them? No. No, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave the saddlebags alone. Here, I'll take them. What do you got in there, gold? It's my ace in the hole. A new start. Our friend here has got some money, Marcy. He was going to pay me $200 cash for a horse. $200? <laughs> Why, you old swindler. That's what I was going to say. Well, I guess he can't be much of a confidence man if he was going to pay you $200 for one of those beat-up old mares. You're the one to look out for, Uncle. <laughs> Here, old man, just relax. We'll get you some help in the morning. I hope. It's past 11. You gonna sit by that window all night? Well, if I have to. Saw a shadow over by the wood pile about 20 minutes ago. It might have been a coyote. Yeah, it might have been. But we can't take that chance. You can go to bed if you want to. I'm not all that tired either. Uh, I... I want you to know, Zeb, I don't think you're to blame for this anymore. That's good. I'd hate for you to plug me in the back in the middle of the night. I'd never plug a man in the back. Hey, it was only a joke. You're not too used to taking jokes, are you? I guess not. But trying to run this farm ain't no joke. Uncle Wilbur's getting pretty old and can't do as much as he used to do. How long have you two lived here? Long time. My folks and my little brother died of cholera when I was about six. I'm sorry. No need to be. I don't really remember much of those times. Uh, Uncle Wilbur's been awful good to me. And I'd say you've been pretty good to him. Yeah, he was lonely, too. His wife, my aunt, died in childbirth. I guess you haven't had much time for square dancing and socials and other things young girls do. No. <laughs> and I wouldn't do them even if I had time. Why not? It's... Way past time for you to start courting. Courting? <laughs> and how old must you be? Where's your wife and six kids? It's different for a man. Why is it different? I sort of thought men and women courted together. Well, they do, but... All right. I should have settled down a long time ago, too. Why didn't you? Because... Because you were in jail? How'd you know about that? It's on your saddle, your blanket... All your gear. Stamped in little letters on the inside of all of it. It says, Territorial Prison. You either robbed a prison or they gave it to you. They let me go three days ago. How long were you in for? Five years. Five years? You must have been awful young when you went in. Nineteen. You might say I've grown up in jail. That's terrible. Well, it was my own fault. I made a stupid mistake. I was like you, orphaned. And I was raised by my older brother. He got sort of wild and joined a gang. The Kurt Fanner gang. Now, they were all older. And I wanted them to like me. <laughs> so when they decided to rob a bank and pier and asked me to go along, I went. Even though I knew it was wrong. I didn't have a very hard part in the robbery. Just held the horses in the street and kept a lookout. Everything went fine until the tail end of the robbery when the sheriff just happened to walk out of his office. Within seconds, the street was full of armed men. My brother and one other got it as soon as they climbed onto their horses. Two more got it before we got out of town. Me and Kurt Fanner himself were the only ones who got away. Of course, we didn't get far. A posse was right after us. I think Fanner would have killed me right then and there, except he knew he had no chance to hold them off by himself. We only had one bag of money left, and we ditched it along the way. It didn't do us much good, though. The posse chased us up into the hills and surrounded us. We had to give ourselves up. Where is Kurt Fanner now? Jail. 
The judge gave him ten years for being the ringleader. Me, I got five. What are you going to do when he gets out? By that time, I'll be far away from here and starting in a new life. Golly, you lost everything. Your brother, five years of your life. Uh, that's all in the past. What I'm counting on now is the future. That is, if we ever get out of this. You want to know something, Zeb? I'm glad you couldn't shoot that sheriff. In a way, so am I. Here we go again. Do you see anything? No, damn it. Oh. Think we need to post a guard, Jack? No, Fanner won't double back on us. He's got more important things to do. When do you think we'll catch up with him? Well, that depends when he stops. We'll never catch up with him if he don't stop first. He stopped to dig up the loot. Somebody stopped to dig up the loot, Brad. We've seen the hole to prove that. But we don't know whether it was Fanner or Zeb Hamilton. They might be together. They might be. Well, then it was a good thing you brought me along, huh, Marshal Jack? Like they say, Brad, the more the merrier. Zeb? Zeb? Huh? What? Rise and shine. It's morning. You slept here all night? By the window? What sleep? I've been standing watch. You've been sleeping. I have? Only for a couple hours. Zeb, what's going to happen? I I'm scared. You? You who were so brave and stood watch all last night? I'm not brave. I just wanted to be near you. I'm flattered. You're making fun. No, I'm not. I'm honestly flattered. Well, you should be. I've never taken any kind of hankering to a man before. If you don't believe me, you can ask my uncle. I know. I did. Well, then you know. Zeb, I gotta know something, too. Do you... Do you like me? Of course I like you. You know the way I mean. Yeah. That's hard to say. Hard to say? Why? Liking a girl like you would be a luxury to me. I've got to keep moving. Get someplace where I can start a new life. What's the matter with this place? It's just too close to everything. Are you worried about the money? The money? Don't play dumb with me. I don't know how much you got in those saddlebags, but it's a damn sight more than they give convicts released from the territorial prison. It's left over from the bank robbery, ain't it? Marcy... That money is my ace in the hole. It's all I've got to start a new life. If I had friends or family... You've got friends. Us. You're awful sweet, Marcy. And don't believe for one instant that the thought hadn't crossed my mind about staying on here. But it just wouldn't work. I'd only bring you and your uncle grief someday. You deserve better than me. Seb Hamilton, I am quite capable of deciding what I deserve and don't deserve. You're not perfect. But then what man is? You're out of jail now. You paid your debt. I'm not proposing marriage. I don't know you all that well. But if you want to stay on here a little while, after we get out of this mess, you're welcome to. You're a very straight-spoken woman. I try to be. It was a fine meal, Marcy, dear. Thank you, Uncle Wilbur. It was good, Marcy. You wouldn't be trying to sway me a little bit, would you? I'm just trying to keep you alive. How do you feel, old man? Getting any of your strength back? You keep asking me that like I'm supposed to jump up and down and do the jig for you any minute. To tell you the truth, I feel pretty good at the moment. But in five minutes, I might feel lousy. I know. I wish we could get a doctor for you. Don't worry about me, son. Just get my niece out of this in one piece. I intend to get us all out in one piece. It's been pretty quiet out there. Well, that's because it just turned dark. I expect we won't have... What the hell was that? Sounds like somebody threw something against the window. It didn't come in because it's stuck in the planks I put up there. What happened? Somebody threw a rock or something against the window. It just stuck there. Let me see if I can pry it out. 
careful, Zeb. Uh, hey, there's a note on it. It's not a note. It's an old newspaper clipping. Can you read it, Zeb? Well, what does it say? Here, you read it. Bank robbers apprehended. Two desperados, the lone survivors of a band of six who held up the miners' bank and pier on Friday, were apprehended and brought into custody today by Sheriff Tillis. The names of the outlaws, members of a notorious gang, are Kurt Fanner and Zeb Hamilton. Oh, Zeb. It's him. Fanner! Fanner, are you out there? <laughs> Fanner, leave him alone! I'm the only one you want! <laughs> Tell us the one about Robux jeans, old-timer. You mean genuine Robux jeans from Sears? Checks. The Western way of life begins in a pair of authentic Western Robux jeans. Made out of hard-working denim? Roping calves, wrestling steers. Why, that's the kind of action heavyweight Robux was made for. Hey, how about looks? Well, whether you're a rodeo star or a city dude, permapressed Robux helped give that neat, rugged cowboy look. Robux, the men's jeans that won the Golden West at most larger Sears retail stores. Strawberries, stoneware with hand-painted strawberries, 45-piece set plus extra serving bowl, Sears Strawberries. Sears hand-painted strawberry stoneware has delectably sweet country looks, and durable, this dishwasher-safe stoneware resists chipping, cracking, or fading, even when exposed to your oven, freezer, or a microwave oven. Enhance your table with these pretty strawberries from Sears. Strawberries, Sears stoneware with hand-painted strawberries. At most larger Sears retail stores. What's the best way to save on new clothes? Sew them. Start by saving $40 on a Kenmore sewing machine at Sears with a convertible free arm for narrow sleeves, cuffs, and legs, a built-in button holder, even six stretch stitches. This free arm Kenmore, just $199.95, and save $30 on a wood veneer sewing cabinet. Sale ends March 31st. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. Lorne Green again, and here's the concluding act of Ace in the Hole. It's me he's after. Zeb, he's been after all of us. Maybe I can work out a deal with him to leave you two alone for a chance at me. No, no, son, we're in this together. Thanks, old man, but it's my fight. I brought this on both of you. Vanner! Vanner, I've got a wounded old man and a girl in here. They haven't done anything to you. Leave them alone and you can have me and the money. No, Zeb! Nice try, little Zeb. You think I can leave them alone after they helped you? After what you did to me? He's loco, Zeb. Five years in jail can do that to a man. Remember what I told you about us being your friend, Zeb? Well, friends don't desert each other when one of them's in trouble. Marcy, you got to listen to me. This man's a killer. He's out for more than money. He, he's out for vengeance. There's no reason you two should risk your lives because of me. I've known all along I'd have to face up to Fanner someday, and this is it. But, Zeb, I love you. And I love you, too. That's exactly the reason you're going to stay out of this. Didn't you tell me there's a town about five miles down the road? Yes. Do you think you could find your way there in the dark? Yes, but... There's uh... no moon, so it's plenty dark. Now that we know there's only one man out there, I can keep him occupied at the front of the house while you sneak out the back. Let me give you my pistol. It's fully loaded. What about you? Uh, I've got your uncle's gun. Sam, I don't want to leave you. It's the only way. What will you do? Now, I'll do what your uncle suggested. I'll put out all the lamps in here, and then Fanner and I will be on equal footing. He stands a chance, Marcy. Do what he says. Oh, Zeb. I know, Marcy. Believe me. I want to see you again as much as you want to see me. Now get going. All right. Good luck. One more thing. I don't want you to turn back no matter what. No matter how much shooting you hear. Just keep going till you get to that town. Do you understand? Yes, Zeb. Zeb. I'm going to draw fire from him and wait till you hear it. See you in a little while. Fanner? Fanner, you're a stinking coward. All you can do is sneak around in the dark. Come out and be a man. 
That's Marcy. She's got herself out the back door. Okay, Wilbur. Douse that lamp. You got a lot of gall to call me a coward, little Zip. The only thing cowardly I ever did was not killing you the day of the robbery. But I'm gonna kill you now! That's the last lamp, son. We're in the dark now. Now I can do it. You gonna go out there? Yep. Come out, you lousy skunk! You didn't tell Marcy the whole story when you gave her your pistol, did you? You know how many bullets you got left in my gun? Yep. Only two. Good luck, young feller. You're gonna die, Sir Hamilton! Got you one, didn't I, Sam? Not yet, Fanner. You ain't never gonna beat me, Sam. Just a little closer, Fanner, and I'll have you. Damn it. You out of bullets, Zeb? Afraid so, old man. Gave him a good run. So, Sam, we come full circle. I've been waiting a long time for this. Sam! I can't... Nice shooting, Jack. Are you two all right? What incarnation? He's bad wounded, and I got winged in the leg. But who are you? We're federal marshals. Fanner's dead, Jack. Well, just as well. You would have hanged for killing that guard. Oh, excuse me, Marshal. Uh, I'm Wilbur Jameson. This here's Zeb Hamilton. Uh, this is my house. Uh, well, won't you come in? Uh, Zeb, get that lamp behind you. Yeah, thank you. It's a little pretty hard to get here after we heard the shots. Thank us. Oh, thank you. You saved our lives, is the truth of it. <laughs> Have a seat, fellas. I'm much obliged. And you've been trailing, Fanner, all this time? Yeah, lucky for us, he stopped to have it out with you. The way I figured, Fanner had an escape plan for a long time. He was just waiting till you got released. That way he could get both you and the money. You do have what's left of the money, don't you? Right there in those saddlebags. I suppose it'll have to go back. Well, it does belong to the bank. How much is in there? About $4,000. Hmm, does anybody know about this money except you two? Uh, Nobody. Uh, uh, That's no. good. <clears throat> Brad, go bring around the horses. Yes, sir. Hey, you're right welcome to spend the night, Marshal. No, I'm afraid I've got a long way to travel yet tonight. Well, what about Wilbur here? He needs a doctor, and my leg... I'm afraid neither one of you will be needing a doctor. Jack, I got the horses. Marshal! <laughs> So you're just going to take the money? You're right. This $4,000 is more than I would make in five years. Nobody knows it exists except you two. You're just going to kill us. I'm huh? not going to kill you. Fanner killed you. He also shot my partner. I just didn't get here in time. So you're the law. Shut up! You're nothing but a no-good jailbird, Hamilton. Nobody's going to miss you. You'll... You'll never get away with it. Who'll stop me? Not you. What the... Marcy! Zeb! Oh, Zeb! Marcy, you came back. I tried, Zeb, when I heard the shots. I, I tried to keep going, but I just couldn't. I couldn't. Oh, Marcy, I've never been so glad to see anybody. Me neither, darling girl. Me neither. <laughs> You look as good as new. Doc says I'm better than new. Says it's the first good rest I've had in 30 years. 
That's just great, Wilbur. Oh, it's wonderful to have you back. How's your leg, young fella? Fine. Marcy's been taking good care of me. I'll bet. Hush, Uncle. Anything new come with that shooting? Nope. Good thing that young Marshal lived, though, and was able to explain what happened. Or else we might all be in the pokey. Zeb turned the money in. Oh, now that's too bad. I thought you needed that money as your ace in the hole to start a new life. I found out I had a better ace in the hole. What's that? Her name is Marcy Jameson. Oh! <laughs> this year, my mom is dressing me up in pretty things from the Sunny Bunch collection at Sears. That's right. She'll look fresh and feminine in these dresses and separates. I can choose from frilly, colorful dresses, bouncy skirts, pants, and just the right coordinating tops. Sizes 7 to 14 in easy care fabric that's machine washable. Whether I'm going to a birthday party or just school, my Sunny Bunch clothes make me feel special. You are special. Thanks, Mom. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. How long do your pantyhose last? Do you want the answer in minutes or hours? You should try Sears Endurables. The pantyhose that lasted an average of 18 days of normal wear in a test with 400 women. The women in our test wore Endurables day after day after day and as a group averaged 18 days. A patented process makes them strong so they last. And sheer, so they look great. No pantyhose lasts forever. How long do your pantyhose last? Endurables at larger Sears retail stores. Join millions of Americans and shop the easy way with a Sears credit card. All you do to apply is call toll-free 800-526-0444. It's your entry to shopping convenience and quality merchandise. Your card will be accepted at over 3,600 Sears stores across the nation. And you can choose from over 100,000 Sears products and services. Even use it for your catalog orders. In the store or over the phone, just say charge it. Call 800-526-0444. New Jersey residents call 800-652-2777 for your Sears credit card. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Ace in the Hole was written by John Bornholt, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Lorne Green. Our stars were John Daner, Joan McCall, and Ron Stark. Also heard were Marvin Miller, Jack Carroll, and Don Diamond. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Bucky Dinner of the New York Yankees. I'm proud to be a member of a great team, and I'm equally proud of my family, Stormy, my wife, and our two children. They're both healthy, normal kids. But you know, there are some children in this world, in your neighborhood, who are not so lucky. They were born with handicaps, injured in accidents, or disabled by illness. All they want is an equal chance with other children to work, to play, to learn, and to feel they will have a place in the world when they grow up. The Easter Seal Society is preparing both children and adults for tomorrow, rehabilitating them, giving them a chance to become self-respecting citizens. That's why I support the work of Easter Seals. As a member of the National Easter Seal Sports Council, we hope you support your local Easter Seals program. It's a great way to help handicapped people. Dear Abby, a listener writes, now that my husband's gone, I've tried to open my own charge accounts and have been turned down. It seems all our credit was listed in his name. Now I'm told I have no credit record in my own name. Signed, Stuck. Dear Stuck, this is a real problem for many women. Four out of five of you will one day be on your own. But if you know your rights, you can help protect yourself against future credit rejection. So take some advice from Dear Abby. Call or write stores for you and your husband to share charge accounts. Have them listed in both names, yours as well as his. Say you want joint charge accounts listed as Mrs. Mary Jones as well as Mr. John Jones, so you will have a history of credit too. 
The law gives you that right. For more information, write for the free booklet, Women and Credit Histories, Federal Trade Commission, Washington, D.C., 20580. That's Women and Credit Histories, FTC, Washington, D.C., 20580. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Let's listen. Now, I came in to withdraw a lousy 25 bucks, and your computer says I don't have an account here anymore. It also says I'm dead. Well, Mr. Glitch, you seem to have a little problem. I have a big problem. Hey, please sit down and wait your turn. So be sure and tune in tomorrow to the Sears Radio Theater. Hello, everybody. I'm Chip Sapola, and we've got another championship soccer season coming up real soon. The Cosmos defending their title against the rest of the North American Soccer League. Join me, Chip Sapola, Jim Carvelis, and Scott Morrison as we bring you all of the exciting play-by-play -play action of Cosmos Soccer, only on WNEW, where when it comes to sports, we've got you covered. This is Bob Jones, and every day on WNEW, I set out to prove that truth is stranger than fiction. Listen at 12.40 and 3.40 in the afternoon, 8.40 in the evening, and on the Milkman's Matinee for The Unexplained, every weekday on WNEW. How many movies did Katherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy make together? Who were FDR's three vice presidents? You don't know? How embarrassing. You better join me, Jim Lowe, in Trivia Central each Monday through Friday at 1040 with William B. and 140 with Bill St. James. Frank, what do you miss about New York? Da 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 dee da da dum. W N E W, 1130 in New York. It's old friends and good music. Hearing it is like going home again. Come on, Francis. Is that the only thing you miss about New York? Well, that and maybe... I remember singing when I was young at the Paramount, which is a wonderful memory. And a lot of other things that I can't discuss with you because this is a daytime program. We're at 11.30 on the dial. WNEW Metromedia Radio in New York. Good evening. At 11 o'clock, it's 37 degrees Fahrenheit, 3 degrees Celsius and clear in Manhattan. Now it's 11 o'clock. Fair weather, cool weather in store for the next couple of days. Peacemakers give thanks, Blanche Bernstein gives up. In sports, Indiana State makes up some lost ground in the second half, and will let the two sides in the umpire's labor dispute argue out their hassle for you. I'm Andy Fisher, WNEW News. We have never in the past said grace before a state banquet. Several people have come by and said on this special occasion we ought to give uh, thanks to God. And if you don't mind, uh, I'd like for all of us who worship the same God to bow our heads for a moment of prayer. <laughs> <laughs> 